audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. So I wonder, who's the most difficult person in your life right now? Chances are you can picture their face. Well, I'd like to spend some time with you chatting about the number one most difficult person in your life. I'm Bernie Diamond, and thank you so much for joining me again on Christianity Works. Today we're kicking off a new series of messages called Dealing with Difficult People. Surely you don't have any of those in your life, right? And do stick with me, because very soon I'll be telling you about my latest life application booklet. It's called Laying Hold of Your Abundant Life, and I'd love to send you a free copy to help you do just that. Live the abundant life that Jesus said he came to give you. Let me ask you a question. When the world looks at the church, what does it see? When people look at the church of Jesus Christ, what is it they see in the media image? Sexual abuse on the news, division amongst denominations, people who mean well demonstrating against this, that and the other. It sees a bunch of people who say one thing and do another. On the one thing, we profess God's love. On the other, well, the church seems to be saying in its media image, do this, don't do that. But by the way, don't mind the fact that we have systematically covered up sexual abuse of children for decades. There's a name for that, and it's called hypocrisy, and the world hates hypocrisy. You and I hate hypocrisy. What do people expect to see? When they look at God's people... What do people expect to see? Tony Campolo is a wonderful man um, out of the US. You may have heard of him. He's just a wonderful minister of God's word. And he often asks young people when he meets them in universities, what's the one thing that you know that Jesus said? And mostly people say this. Mostly people remember that Jesus said, love your enemy. And too often it seems that we as God's people, as Christians, a kind of telling people how far they've strayed from God. You know, we we talk about this social issue or that social issue instead of reaching out to people and telling them how close God really is in Jesus Christ. Well, that's the big picture. That's the macro. What about the micro? What, What about you and me? When they look at us, what do they see? Do they see love your enemy? 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 says this, Let us love one another, for love comes from God. And, and when you look at Jesus, when, when you look at how he dealt with people and what he taught and what he spoke about, the biggest thing for him was that love walk. The biggest thing for him was valuing people and loving them into the kingdom of God. We got a new revelation of who God is when Jesus arrived. And then when you look at the rest of the New Testament, the epistles that come after the Gospels, the letters that were written amongst the New Testament church when Jesus had risen again, more and more you see that revelation expounded as walk in love, love God and love other people. John Gray, the author of that famous book, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus, makes a very interesting point in that book. He says that very few people ever grow in love. Why is that? Because loving is difficult. The people we love can be difficult sometimes. 45% of marriages, almost half, fail. I wonder of those that are left, how many of them are lousy marriages? We want to love. It's not enough to want to love. We actually need to know how to love. I really believe that. Let me just say that again. It's not enough for us to know that we ought to walk in love. We actually need to know how to do that. And so on Christianity Works this week, we're starting a series of four messages called Dealing with Difficult People. Because difficult people are all around us. Difficult relationships are all around us. And our ability to look like Jesus and be like Jesus and love like Jesus depends on our ability to deal with the difficult people in our lives, those that Jesus referred to as our enemies. Let me ask you, who's the most difficult person you'll ever meet? 
Just close your eyes for a minute and visualise the most difficult person you have ever met. I'm sure you can see their face and, and it stirs up emotions in you. Now open your eyes. If I had a mirror, I'd be standing in front of you holding up the mirror and saying, here, look at the most difficult person that you will ever meet. Take a good look. Because we look at ourselves for five, maybe ten minutes in the mirror in the morning, and then we spend the rest of the day looking at other people. Day after day after day, we look at other people. And sometimes, the better we know them, the better we know their faults and their weaknesses and their blind spots, and we experience the things that they do to hurt us or the things that they don't do to hurt us, and we go from recognising their strengths and weaknesses to judging those. Now, it's, it's right to look at someone and say, this person is good at this and not good at that, and to assess them. But we can step over a line where that good assessment of someone turns into judgement, and that line is called anger and resentment. When all of a sudden, what other people do to us or say to us or omit to do to us, when those things get us angry and resentful and vengeful, we have stepped over a very important line. And all the time, we forget that in order for us to have a difficult person in our lives, we have to have a relationship with them. It's not so much that they're difficult people, it's that we are having a difficult relationship. It takes two to tango, as the saying goes. And sometimes as we get to know these people better and their weaknesses hurt us and their failures grate up against our personalities, we can start to judge them. Instead of looking at them through God's eyes, we end up looking at them through the devil's eyes. Jesus said, you've heard it said, don't murder. And anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you, that anyone who is angry with his brother is subject to judgment. Well, what is that judgment? What does that look like? Why, why do we go there? So what is it? What happens when we run into a difficult person and we step over that line? We step over the line from a sober assessment of who they are into that realm of judgment and resentment. Well, Jesus talked about that because it was an important issue was 2,000 years ago, it still is today. This is what he said. If you have a Bible, grab it. You can open it at Matthew's Gospel, the first book in the New Testament, chapter 6, verse 22. Matthew 6, 22. This is what he said. He said, The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. And then the light in you is darkness. How great is that darkness? I, when you think about it, is our major organ of perception. We, we see the world through our eyes. And Jesus was using it here as a metaphor. It's true in a physical sense, but it's also true in an emotional and spiritual sense. How we see things often becomes the problem when we're having a relationship that's difficult. Now, if the eye is healthy, then we'll see light. We'll see things the way that they are. But Jesus says if the eye is unhealthy then you'll be full of darkness. And how dark is that darkness? When we get a wrong perspective, it kind of creeps up on you. I suffer from glaucoma, which is a disease of the eye, where the pressure in your eye ultimately damages the optic nerve that carries the images back to your brain. And it happens very gradually. You lose your peripheral vision, and all of a sudden, you can barely see, and by then it's too late. Now, fortunately for me, they caught it early, and I've, I've got treatment, and I can see just fine. But when our eye is diseased, when our perception is diseased, we often don't notice that it's going on. Have a listen to this wonderful story. It was written by Frank Koch in the magazine Proceedings, which is the magazine of the U.S. Naval Institute. This is what he writes. He says, Two battleships assigned to the training squadron had been sent on manoeuvres in heavy weather for several days. I was serving on the lead battleship and I was on watch on the bridge when night fell. The visibility was poor with patchy fog, so the captain remained on the bridge to keep an eye on all activities. Shortly after dark, the lookout on the wing of the bridge reported, Light bearing on the starboard bow! Is it steady or moving astern? the captain called out. The lookout replied, Steady, captain! Which meant that we were on a dangerous collision course with that ship. 
The captain then called to the signalman. He said, signal that ship. We're on a collision course. Advise that you change course 20 degrees. Back came a signal. Advise for you to change course 20 degrees. And the captain said, send I am a captain. Change course 20 degrees. I'm a seaman second class, came back the reply. You'd better change course 20 degrees. By that time, the captain was furious and he spat out, send I am a battleship. Change course 20 degrees. Back came the flashing light. I'm a lighthouse. We change course 20 degrees. The captain was caught in a fog. Now, there were two battleships out there on exercise, so he thought that that other light was a battleship, but he had fog. He couldn't see properly. He was trying to keep an eye on things, but his vision was clouded. The picture in his head was of two ships, and he relied on the picture in his head, and the picture was wrong, yet he got angry even though it was because he had the wrong picture in his head. And that's exactly what we do. We have a map in our head of other people and and why they do what they do and how they do it and what they're doing to us. We have this map in our head of other people. And sometimes it gets distorted. Sometimes we don't have the right end of the stick. Sometimes our vision is clouded. And we just get it plain wrong. Maybe if we're insecure, we want other people to walk on eggshells because of our insecurity. Maybe if we're arrogant, we want other people to be perfect, made in our image. You know, perfection is always, they're exactly like me. Maybe if we've got selfish ambition, we want people to get out of our road so we can go and do what we want to do. The list goes on. You know, not so long ago, I visited a city, a large city that I used to live in, and I had an old street directory. And I was trying to travel from point A to point B in the centre of the city in my car. And I got to a point and I discovered all of a sudden they'd put a pedestrian mall in the middle of one of the main streets. I had the wrong map. And when we do that in our relationships with other people, it can be a painful thing. Our past hurts or our own weaknesses or our own sin... All those things, the devil uses those to destroy relationships. We see things through the lens of our experiences. I wear glasses. Maybe you wear glasses, maybe you don't. But we see things through the lens of who we are, our strengths and weaknesses, of our experiences, of our past, of our insecurities. If we looked at some of the people in our lives who are so difficult, the ones who hurt us and disappoint us, the ones whom we've made our enemies, if we knew the hurts and disappointments in their lives that make them do what they do, it would be enough to stop us from any feelings of hostility or anger or anything like that. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body would be full of darkness. And if the light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? In other words, if you think you're seeing light and clearly, but actually it's distorted, Boy, that's a really, really bad place to be. Come on. Isn't it sometimes the problems in our relationships are not so much what other people are doing, but how we see the world? What are the things in my life, what are the things in your life that distort our view of exactly what's going on? How is it that we can see clearly? We're talking about judgment. We're talking about dealing with difficult people and how it is sometimes that we get all hurt by what other people do when so often it's got to do with our own failures and our own weaknesses and and the way we see the world based on who we are. Again, Jesus talked about this. Open a Bible if you've got one at Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. It's what he said. He said, Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment that you make... You will be judged, and the measure you give will be the measure that you get. Now, under what circumstances, according to Jesus, is it okay to judge other people? Never. Do not judge, so that you may not be judged. Wow. Because judgment is about anger and retribution. When I judge you, I want my pound of flesh. I want to tear you apart. Yeah, that's what we're like as people. And Jesus is saying, it's not your job. Don't judge other people. Boy, that's hard. Have a look at Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Just flick there for a moment. This is what the Apostle Paul writes. He says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, because it's written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. 
Now, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. If I judge, what? God is going to judge me. God will judge me by the same rules that I apply to judging other people. Look at it. Back to Matthew chapter 7 where Jesus was talking. He said, why is it that you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but you don't notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your eye while there's a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the log out of your own eye and then you'll see clearly enough to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. The log in my eye. The log in your eye. That's our failures and our weaknesses and our downsides and our sin. That's what causes our perception to be distorted. Come on, if I'm an insecure person, am I going to expect everybody to walk on eggshells for me? If I'm an arrogant person, am I going to expect them all to kowtow to me? Or am I going to humble myself and take the log out of my eye? If I'm on a mission, I've got a goal in life that's not from God, and I want to roll over the top of people, will I lay it down? This stuff's not easy because the log in our own eye, we don't want to know it's there. We, we don't want to admit that we have a log in our own eye, but we sometimes do. It's not easy to get rid of. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. That's why we need the Word of God. That's why you and I are together right now. We can be such slackos, but what if, what if we put determination and humility in our heart? What if we came to Jesus and said, Lord, I've heard your word, and I confess this log. I, I confess my own poverty. I, I confess my complete inability to do anything about it except to lay it at your feet, to lay it at the foot of the cross and say, Lord, I need your help. Because you know something, anything less is hypocrisy. The word hypocrisy that, that Jesus uses there means an actor who is two-faced. The world hates hypocrites. You and I hate hypocrites. How can we be hypocrites? How can we walk around with a log in our eye and say to our neighbour, oh, you've got a speck in yours? Come on. Now, does that mean that we can never deal with someone else's problem? No. That's not what Jesus said. Have a look at chapter 7, verse 5 of Matthew again. He said, you hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you'll see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbour's eye. Because when we take out the log, when we take out our failures out of the equation, when we take off the devil's glasses and we put on God's glasses and we see the world clearly through his eyes, through God's word, through who he is, all of a sudden the judgment goes away. A desire for anger and revenge goes away. You and I, we can't genuinely help anybody when we're angry with them. Can I say that again? We can't genuinely help anybody to take the speck out of their eye when we're angry with them. All we can give them is cynical, self-serving and self-seeking hypocrisy and judgment. First, we need to take the log out of our own eyes. First, we need to admit that maybe our own insecurities are ruining this relationship. Maybe our own selfishness is ruining this relationship. Maybe some unrealistic expectations are ruining this relationship. Jesus said, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and plate, but inside they're full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup so that the outside may also become clean. How do I deal with difficult people? For me, the first step is saying, I'm the most difficult person I will ever meet. I am with me 24 by 7. I am with me every minute of every day, of every week, of every month, of every year for the rest of my life on this earth. And Jesus is saying to me, Jesus is saying to you, examine your own motives in the light of God's word and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Have a look again at the book of Romans, if you will, with me. Chapter 5, verses 6 to 8. Paul writes this, he says, For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. 
Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. When you and I were still sinners, when we were an enmity to God, God proved his love for us by looking beyond our sin. He didn't let the hurt that he felt at our sin immobilise him or deter him from the cross. We all know John 3.16, that's the good news, because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him won't perish but have eternal life. But what about 1 John 3.16, that letter towards the end of the New Testament? What does that say? Got to remember this one too. It says this, We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for each other. In other words, be imitators of God. We are made to be like God. Not to be God, but to be like God. We're, We're made in his image, and the one thing that stops us from that is our sin our weaknesses and our failures. And Jesus is saying, take the log out of your eye. Because as long as you carry it around, you are the most difficult person that you will ever meet. And when you you can see clearly, when you can see through my eyes, when you can see your enemies as the people who God created and God loves, as people made in his image, all of a sudden, Life becomes a lot better. All of a sudden, it becomes so much easier to deal with those difficult people when we acknowledge that we are part of the difficulty in that relationship. It takes courage to identify the log in your eye. You know, it it takes determination to cast it out. It takes humility to love your enemy. So how about it? Don't underestimate. This is a huge thing. It's being prepared to change our perspective, to lay our pride down, to struggle through this over and over again, to die to ourselves for the glory of Jesus Christ. When they look at you, when they look at me, will they see someone and say, now there is someone that's like Jesus. There is someone who heard Jesus say, love your enemy. Come on, will they? taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.